So you can ignore the fill time. For this to be statistically significant, it would have, your pipeline would probably have to be thousands of stages long. Okay. I'm sorry, one more time, can you go over the, the fill time? Yeah, the fill time is the um, amount of time, amount of cycles it takes such that the pipeline is fully utilized. So all the resources within the pipeline are being uh, implemented on some instruction. So with the laundry example, we hit that in cycle three. Okay. When we had the washer, the dryer, and the folder all being utilized. Okay. Cool. Okay. So it's, it's non-trivial the amount of time that it won't control. Okay. Or it is trivial the amount of time. Yeah, it, this, this, is, this is trivial. Uh, for real pipelines, this is trivial. Okay. Now. Let's look at a sequence of code. So I'll get to the specifics of a Raspberry Pi's pipeline in a bit, but let me start with their basic five-stage uh, pipeline that we've been talking about in class. That's the uh, fetch decode execute. Memory. this very small example, right? I have in cycle one, I can put the add. Cycle two, sub, the add those here. Cycle three. Cycle four, our first hazard presents itself. Okay. So the observation here is that the add generates a result that's going to be written to register one. That value is then utilized by the subsequent instruction. Sub. This is referred to as a read after write hazard. You think, well, that's not a hazard. Well, of course, you should write something before you should read it. It doesn't make sense to read something before you've written it. Um, but that, in fact, is the hazard. If that, if I read R one while the sub is here in the execute stage, I get the wrong value. Okay, why? Because R1 isn't the, the, the sum of R2 and R3 that's generated in this instruction isn't committed to the register until the write back stage.
this is one example of what's called a data password. So see people actively note-taking, so pausing and tell everything. What's the distinction between two hazards? It, uh, this is, uh, it, the read after write hazard is an example of a data hazard. hazard. Okay. Yeah. It, it's the only one we really care about for this introductory purpose. Okay. Um, in other architectures, write after read becomes a problem, write after write becomes a problem. Read after read is never a hazard. So we, so this issue comes from the fact that we don't put things into the register until the write back. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. So typically the registers are read for the following, for the AOU stage, the execute stage, during this decode component here. So if the subtract instruction, we were to read the registers R1 and R3. R3 is fine. We don't have any issue with R3. But the value it's going to get from the register file for R1 at this time is, is going to be wrong. Okay. It's going to have some old value of R1, and, and it's incorrect for this purpose. Okay. So all hazards, data hazards, control hazards that we talked about in lecture today, all these hazards can be eliminated by waiting. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, okay, so what that means is we can just put this, keep the sub right here in the decode stage. We'd have to identify that R1 isn't ready yet. Okay, so we'd have to know that the instruction before the sub, the add, is going to write a value to R1. And we just keep the sub right here and the add keeps marching forward. And when it has written it back, then we can advance the sub and move forward as well. That creates a gap in the pipeline. The gap in the pipeline we call those stall cycles. And that's where the resource at that stage is not doing any valuable work. It's not committing a result or doing anything to, uh, to an instruction. These stall cycles increase the CPI of the program. Why? Okay, well, in, in a perfect world, this would take a cycle, the add, the sub would take a cycle, the XOR takes a cycle. Now what we're saying is the add would have to get all the way to the right pack. Then, say, three cycles later, the subtract would finish. And then three cycles later, the subtract would finish again, or the XOR would finish. There are multiple dependencies in this code. Okay. So this always works, but we don't like this solution. Okay. So the benefits that we gain by decreasing clock cycle time 
can be overshadowed by the increases to CPI if we're not careful. Questions so far? So, my intention here is to introduce the problem. One naive way of solving it, which we don't want to. <coughs> Excuse me, then uh, what can we do to improve this situation so we don't have to solve? So let me draw this diagram in a slightly different fashion. Yeah. I'm going to do uh, the description in a slightly different way, but it, 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 it actually is representing the same thing. Okay. The add instruction goes through each of these stages. Okay. And it goes through each of these stages in a cycle-wise fashion. So this is cycle one, cycle two, cycle three, cycle four, and cycle five. Now, so on clock cycle two, we can put the subtract into play. I still haven't solved the problem yet. We still have the dependency. But the reason I've drawn the diagram in this slightly different fashion is to illustrate, hopefully, um, the mechanism that we use to prevent having to wait for uh, the producing instruction to finish. So the observation, let's not use the term R1 here. Let's use the term the sum of R2 and R3. Let's ignore the register. We have done an add instruction, right? We have computed the sum of R2 and R3 here. that result, the sum of R2 and R3, at the beginning of the execute stage here in C4. So why don't we just send this down here and have this be one of these inputs. Now, keep in mind that the execute stage looks Means is we need a capability for the output of the ALU. 
somehow have some feedback back around to the input. And it turns out this is exactly what we want, right? In this case, we don't need to wait for the result to be written back to the register. What we really need is the output of the ALU from the previous clock cycle, because that has the value that I want. It's already in the data path. So hopefully, we can have a mechanism to do that. Now, this doesn't happen for free. Um, there is. Uh, first, I didn't describe what this is called. Um, 